I'm going to share my secrets to leveling up your Monstera Deliciosa and getting those coveted inner fenestrations. Go from this to this. Hey, Lee here, and this is my Monstera Deliciosa. I originally got this plant as a two leaf cutting in around December of 2019. A year and a bit later, this plant is thriving in my space. This plant wasn't fully fenestrated, its newest leaf only having a single fenestration on just one of its sides. There are three things that have made this plant so successful as an indoor plant. The first is sunlight. If you want to get fenestrations, especially those inner fenestrations, you need lots of sunlight. Most Monstera Deliciosa care guides will tell you that this plant needs bright but indirect sunlight. And there's where I disagree. Over the past year and a bit, I've been experimenting with this plant and actually training it to take direct sunlight for a large portion of the day, including in the spring and summer. Let me explain. I have floor to ceiling south facing windows. They're unobstructed, so they get a lot of direct sunlight throughout the day. Over the past few months, I've slowly moved my Monstera closer and closer to my window, and I found that my sweet spot is about three feet away from my south facing window. Here's how you can reproduce these results in your space. Assuming your monster is doing well in its current spot, make a plan to move your plant four to six inches closer to your brightest window every two weeks. During those two weeks, you're gonna be monitoring your plant closely. Especially check the tips of the leaves for any signs of discoloration. What you're doing is you're actually looking for signs of sunburn. A sunburn monstera will turn yellow and then black. Be extra vigilant because the leaves won't heal once they are burned. If you don't see any signs of stress on the leaves, you're free to keep doing this every two weeks until you've found the perfect spot for your monsteras. These plants are really good at adapting to slow changes over time, especially the large ones, but if you have a smaller monstera, like a seedling or a very small cutting, I would recommend smaller increments. Maybe instead of four to six inches, you could try two to four inches every two weeks. The more light this plant gets, the more fenestrations you'll see. And the spacing between the nodes will actually be smaller, which will make a more compact, more fuller, and better looking plant. If this video has already been helpful, give the video a like and consider subscribing. The second way I've gotten more fenestrations with this plant is by giving it something to climb. I made this moss pole for my Monstera, but using a giant stake, even a tree branch, or a PVC pipe will work just as well. As long as you're using plant ties to attach it to something that it can climb, your plant will get bigger and have more fenestrations. Anything works, it depends on what kind of look you're going for. On a side note, if you have a seedling Monstera, please don't bother with a moss pole. Any stick is fine and it really doesn't need anything to climb until the leaves become too large to support itself. Eventually, you'll want to cut and propagate the top part of your plant anyway. Putting a moss pole in something this small would be such a hassle, especially if the aerial roots start to burrow into your moss pole. My last great tip is soil. Although this is a beginner house plant, the soil composition is actually pretty complicated. I did make a full length video about Monstera and Philodendron soil, so you can check that out if you want more information. Thanks for watching and good luck with your Monstera!